Nice to see everyone. Thank you so much for attending today. My name is Melissa Hagerstrom. I am the Associate Director of Undergraduate Recruitment for the Bouvet College of Health Sciences. I'm really excited to have you um, joining us or watching this recording of um, a webinar about our PharmD program. We're joined by faculty, staff, and alums, so we'll be able to answer a lot of your questions about um, this amazing program in the Bouvet College of Health Sciences. I will be putting my um, contact information in the chat, and we'll also have um, a copy of our Bouvet undergraduate curriculum book, which has some really great information, um, and it kind of lays out the course plan as well for the pharmacy program. Um, so please take a look at that. If you do have any questions after this session, don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to answer any questions or direct you to the right um, location if needed. Um, and during the session, if you have any questions, please utilize the Q&A function at the bottom, um, and we will get to your questions at the end. So with that, I'm going to hand it over to Dr. Van Amper. So good afternoon, good morning, good day, whenever time you pick this up. Um, so welcome to our webinar. I am Jen Van Amberg. I am a faculty member in the School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, and I am also the Assistant Dean in the Office of Student Affairs within our school. So I have the pleasure of welcoming you, you to this um, webinar where we're going to talk about our program and we're going to be focusing on the PharmD program. So I am going to pull up some slides just to give you an overview of our program, sort of highlight some things that we like to share and that we're most excited about. And then we have some of our pharmacy students here as well as one of our alums who's going to talk about sort of what she's taken from our program and gone on to do. So I'm going to start sharing my screen and we're going to look, can everybody see my screen? Yes, perfect, all right. So, you know, everybody likes numbers and particularly if you're coming into the School of Pharmacy, we love numbers. So I thought I'd just give you a little bit of a highlight of our program. Um, we are very excited. We are ranked number one among private pharmacy schools um, in the United States for our NIH funding. We have world renowned researchers who work with us within our school and they also are faculty within our program. So you get to sort of touch base with these individuals. We are ranked number two as private pharmacy schools in the US News of World and Report for the program that we have. Um, and we're ranked number 31 across all of our pharmacy schools. So again, we're pretty well ranked in there and we're very proud of that. Um, we think that we have a great and outstanding curriculum that is preparing our students for being quite successful. And with that, we are really excited to share that, you know, there are more than 98% of our students are employed within that one year after graduating. We have a very, very high NAPLAX rate. It's 98%, and that's much higher than our national rate. And then the other thing that a lot of students start thinking about, and you may not think about it as an early pharmacy student, but what can I do upon graduating? We have a very large number of our graduates who go on to postgraduate training in residency and fellowships. So if you want to practice in industry, if you want to do more direct patient care, our students are very successful upon graduating from our program. And we're very excited to have them back and share with us all the great things that they do. Why Northeastern? I think one of the most amazing things about our program is really our experiential learning. Um, and so our experiential learning is really integrated throughout our curriculum. So, you know, we have academics, um, which is our, you know, your day-to-day -day classes that you're doing. But within our program, we have experiential pro um, training as well. So we have introductory pharmacy practice experiences, which we call co-op. Um, and that's an opportunity like during your um, pre-pharmacy year and in your early part of your per professional years, you'll go out and complete four month um, training. Uh, these are paid experiences. I do like to highlight that because we're one of the only, well, let me rephrase that. We are the only school in the United States that has paid um, experiences. So if you were to look at any of the other schools, their introductory pharmacy practice experiences are not paid. Ours are paid, and that is because we're built on this cooperative education model. So you're meeting those competencies, but it's through our co-op program that you meet them. Additionally, there's opportunity for research. So again, you can be doing research during your program or depending on um, your, what your schedule looks like, you can actually take one of your co-op experiences and make it research focused. At the P4 year, so again, our program that you're looking at is a six-year program two years in our pre-pharmacy, and then you progress into our first professional year. At the end of our fourth professional year, you'll spend that whole year doing advanced pharmacy practice experiences. And what are they? They're training in the clinical setting. 
Um, there's six week rotations. And again, it's the opportunity for you to take what you've learned in the classroom and applying it to the work um, that we do out there. And then we have a fair amount of service learning opportunities through our student organizations and um, outreach compo components, which is again, affiliated within the, the university, but again, tailored to the program within the School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. Another amazing thing that we're most excited about is how close we are and where we are. So we are in Boston and we are affiliated with many of the well-known and reputable hospitals um, in the world. So again, many of our co-op experiences or our IPI experiences and our API experiences do take place in these major medical um, facilities. So again, great opportunity to get connected. Um, you might have heard of some of these, but our students do have the opportunity to work in these world-renowned um, hospitals. Um, again, they could be four months in length. They could be six weeks if they're on your appies. And the other thing I'd like to say is many of our students, after their co-op and they're coming back into the classroom, will keep their position there and work part-time. So again, it's a, a great opportunity. What I love about this is the network. So early on in your program, you're building that network, you're getting connected to you know, these, these institutions, to um, individuals out there, which we believe really helps upon graduation when you're going on to post-grad training or whether you're going on for employment, that you've already built this amazing network. Our faculty, um, as I shared with you, are both world-renowned in their research and their clinical practice. Many of them serve on national um, professional committees. The amazing thing about Northeastern is you're coming to a large university, so it has all the attributes of a large university, within a college of health sciences, so again, interprofessional opportunities, and then we have a school of pharmacy and pharmaceutical sciences, so you have that small field in a large university, so you get all those things that you're looking for in going to university, but all the small things that you want in that um, professional training program that you would like to be a part of. We have Baracus Health Science Center. That's really where our Bouvet is based out of. If you come to campus, you'll see that the Baracus Center is really the homepage for Bouvet. We have amazing research labs that our, um, our pharmaceutical sciences work in. We have a simulation lab that we do a lot of, um, of our lab simulations or um, you know, our practice aspects in there. And then we have a skills lab as well. And then again, as I already mentioned to you, one of the amazing things is that you're coming to a large university. So the student life, the organizations that you can get involved in and you know the, the resources that you have available to you. And I'm hoping that our students will talk to this about how integrated they are within that university. Um, but we have multiple student organizations. You can be involved in non-pharmacy ones that are at the university level, or we have pharmacy specific ones that are, are hosted within the School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences. The other thing is, while you're on campus, you don't always feel like you're in a city, but you're surrounded in, in this amazing city. So again, it's got a campus feel, but you're in an urban environment. And so you have those aspects of being in a, in a Boston area and that we're really into promoting our diversity and inclusion. And you will see that when you walk around our campus and, and look around to see what's there. Just to give you a little sense about what our curriculum list look, looks like, um, we are look, you know, we are a six year program, two years are pre pharmacy. So again, we have pre pharmacy year one and year two, which are really your core sciences and making sure that you have those foundations to move on. You will then progress into our first professional year, what we call our P one year, and you will do three years P one P two P three of really more that didactic classroom. It's really our foundations of biomedical and pharmaceutical sciences, our clinical sciences, um, educational sciences, as it relates to people understanding how medications and how to take medications and how to communicate that with, with patients. And then in that P4 years, when you're actually going to go out and actually practice doing it, because that's your advanced pharmacy practice. So no more um, classroom setting during that P4 year. It's all out in the clinical. So you'll be in hospitals, you'll be in community health centers, you'll be in community pharmacies. You might do industry, um, but a whole variety of areas, but you're actually taking your, your three previous years of training and now applying it there. I am most excited to share that we're looking at a curricular revision, which for some are like, why are you doing it? But it is time. It's time for us to look at that and say, are we being innovative? Are we putting out the students where we want them to be for the next generation of practicing? 
And so that's very exciting to us as we look to sort of integrating and becoming more interdisciplinary in our, in our study and in our learning. I'm going to stop there and stop sharing and we're gonna go back so that you can see everybody. And we are going to, if there's questions, I'm sure that they're going to come up, but we're going to actually ask our pharmacy students who are with us today. And we have a couple of students who are in their P1 year and we have a student who's in their P3 year. And then, like I said, we have an alum. So Secura, I'm gonna turn it over to you as our first student to introduce and welcome. Awesome, thank you. Um, so hello everyone watching this. Uh, my name is Sakura. I'm a P3 or a fifth year pharmacy student and I'm from Marlboro, Massachusetts, so just central Massachusetts. Um, and yeah, just a little bit about the experiences I've had here at Northeastern. I've done three co-ops so far um, through the pharmacy program. I did my first one at the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute Research Pharmacy and my second one at a pharmaceutical company called Alnylam, which specializes in rare diseases. And my third one, also institutional at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center in Boston. And yeah, they were very great in shaping my interest in pharmacy. Um, and then just a few of my extracurriculars. I'm a resident assistant on campus. So I oversee um, residents living in the dormitories. I'm also a coordinator for the Bouvet Fellows Program. So as a first year student, you're put in an intro to college course and you usually have one to two TAs within that major to kind of help and guide your first semester on campus. And then I'm also part of a social sorority called DeFi and it's helped to kind of promote my leadership and my community service and involvement with the community. Okay, so next up is going to be Serena. Hi, I'm Serena. I'm in my P1 year right now. Um, I'm from Hopkinton, Massachusetts, which is the start of the Boston Marathon. Um, I did NU in Greece my first semester. Um, so I studied abroad in Thessaloniki. Um, some things I'm involved in on campus are um, the Bouvet Ambassadors Club, Cheese Club, and Studio Art Club. Um, and for my first co-op, I just had it over this past summer and I did a community co-op at Walgreens Pharmacy um, in Framingham. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Anna? Hi everyone, my name's Anna. Um, I'm originally from Buffalo, New York and I'm a P1 here at Northeastern. So overall my third year studying here. Um, this past summer, I completed my first co-op um, at the Beth Israel Retail Pharmacy, and that was my first time really working in pharmacy, so I learned a lot from that. Um, on campus, I'm involved in a sorority, Kappa Kappa Gamma. Um, uh, my first two years, I was in a club called Peace Through Play, and I ex actually just joined an organization called Globe Med. Um, all of those have provided me with a lot of volunteer opportunities and connection with the Northeastern Boston community. Um, yeah, so I've really loved my time here at Northeastern so far. And last but not least, Isla. Hi everyone, my name is Isla. Um, I'm originally from Nashville, New Hampshire, which is about an hour north of Boston, and I am a third year or a P1 in the doctor of pharmacy program. Um, on campus, I'm involved with a couple pharmacy organizations. I'm in Kappa, Kappa Psi, which is a pharmaceutical uh, fraternity. Um, I'm also in Phi Lambda Sigma, which is the pharmacy leadership society here, and also Bouvet Ambassadors. Um, outside of pharmacy, I am also in the Northeastern Skate Club and also Asian Student Union. Um, this past summer, I also completed my first co-op at Massachusetts General Hospital, and that was just a really great experience overall. All right, and there's there are some questions coming up, but before we go to that, I'm going to introduce Emily. Emily is a graduate of our program from 2018, and she has graciously said she'd come back um, and share a little bit about the experience that she had at Northeastern um, and what Northeastern has done for her as she's continued on and is now employed and working and doing all great things. So Emily, thank you. And I'll give you a few minutes to introduce yourself and where you are and what Northeastern has done for you. 
Thank you. Um, so yeah, my name is Emily. I graduated in 2018. Um, I had an interesting route in my pharmacy career. I got my undergrad in New York at a state school and then went to Northeastern as a graduate student. So I started the P1 year. Um, I did two co-ops, not three, so a slightly different path, but I kept both those jobs throughout my four years at Northeastern. So I worked at Cambridge Health Alliance Hospital at the outpatient pharmacy. I also worked at the VA hospital in West Roxbury um, inpatient pharmacy. So I got a very wide range of experience. And from there, I graduated and I started a residency program at Elliott Hospital in New Hampshire, Man Manchester, New Hampshire. So that was mostly an inpatient experience. And I learned I really liked critical care at that time. And now I work at Leahy Hospital, mainly in the ICU. Um, so that's where I was today. And I'm currently working here right now. <laughs> um, so work, uh, Getting my uh, degree from Northeastern was a really great experience, as mentioned, because I was able to work in a lot of different areas, especially in my last year and exp uh, experiential year, um, working in all the different Boston hospitals and really learned exactly what I wanted to do with my career. And that's what I'm doing now. So thank you, Emily. And she, we, we were having a conversation prior to this about infectious disease. So I'm sure she could have filled us in on some more details about that. So it looks like there is our first question, Melissa. Is there time to work on research along with co-ops as a PharmD student? So do any of my pharmacy students or our pharmacy students would like to answer that or I will answer that? I can answer that one too. All right, Emily, we'll let you answer and then I'll follow up. <laughs> so I, um, through, from what uh, my experience, we had to do um, the capstone project which is a requirement at the end of your last year in classroom. Um, and so I was able to do that project along with two of my other classmates. And it was um, uh, a CE that we pr uh, prepared and presented to other pharmacists. And then I also did my own research on the side because I was really interested in infectious disease. And I was able to present that at mid-year. So I worked two jobs, did two re research projects, and I was able to stay on top of all the work. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's definitely manageable. And I would just add to that. So research is very broad for us in the pharmacy program. So there's bench side research, which that may be what you're thinking about, like working in a lab. But there's a lot more research that the faculty do besides just bench. So we always like to talk to our students about from bench to bedside. So again, I may not be doing research in the bench of the drug discovery or drug delivery, but I may be doing the research in the practice side about how well do patients take their medications? What's the impact on the patients in terms of improving health outcomes? So what Emily's talking about is her research was more on the bedside aspect or on the pharmacy education side. Um, and so again, yes, as she shared during your P2 into your P3 year, and Secura is gonna be doing that. She's already starting to think about that. You do have to do a capstone. It is all directly driven by students. We do encourage students to work in, you know, more than just by themselves, like in two or three people, um, but you're expected to create the idea to come up and working. You have to identify a faculty member who will support you, but you have to go through understanding the methodology, getting IRB approval if you need it, which is Institute of Research Board approval. Um, so again, you get all those skill sets so that when you graduate, those are things that you may have to go on and do depending on what you're going to do um, when you graduate, right? If you're going to go on to fellowship or um, post-grad residency, research is going to continue to be a part of your um, trajectory of what you need to work on. Um, thank you. I think that was really helpful information. Um, one of the questions I know I get asked a lot um, is about some of the things that make us a little bit different than other pharmacy programs. And Dr. Van Amberger talked a little bit about co-op um, versus the IPI and the API. And I think we'll come back to that because you know that's a, a huge differentiator between us and some other programs. But another um, big thing that is different about our program is that we are an early assurance program. Um, so I didn't know, um, Dr. Van Amberger, if you can talk briefly about what that means and then um, maybe one of our students can talk a little bit about their transition from the pre-professional to the professional years of the program. Absolutely. So um, early assurance means that you're committed to coming into pharmacy. You know coming out of high school that pharmacy is where you want to be. And our program allows you to do two years of pre-pharmacy work and go directly into your first professional year. Now, there are progression requirements that our students will talk about. 
that we lay out for you. Um, and these are there so that we know that you're successful once you go into that P1 year. All students have to go through a, an interview process. That is a requirement of our accreditation. So the pharmacy accreditation requires that. So it's not intended to scare you away. No matter you know, where you are, you have to do that. But early assurance means if you come to Northeastern and you say, yes, I wanna be in pharmacy and you meet these progression requirements and pass the in interview, you are guaranteed a seat in the first professional year. Um, so that's early assurance, as opposed to what you heard Emily speak about where she went and did an undergraduate degree and then decided that she wanted to come to pharmacy school. She came in a different pathway to get there. But early assurance, if you commit and say, yes, I wanna do pharmacy and I wanna study it at Northeastern, you can come right in as a pre-pharmacy year one, meet those requirements and be guaranteed a seat into our first professional year of our program. Any of our students who are in the P1 year, do you wanna talk a little bit about what your transition was like? Was it an easy transition? Um, what, was, what was the process like on your end? Yeah, I can take this one. Thanks, Ava. So um, in your PP1 and PP2 year, so that would be your freshman and sophomore year, um, it's basically just the core classes. So you take your uh, general chemistry, general bio, um, organic chemistry, physics, those kinds of classes. And then as you go into your P1 year and above, they become a little bit more pharmacy oriented um, with your like pharmacology, biochemistry, et cetera. And even though the material doesn't, um, it's not like, a continuation of what you learned in your first two years. I feel like the experience that I've had, like learning how to study in the first two years and how to like um, prepare for exams and all that stuff really like prepared me really well um, for my P1 year and on. Um, Cause you know, college is a difficult transition from high school. You do have to do things a little bit differently. And so in your first two years, that's where you sort of learn what works for you and what doesn't work for you um, and just set yourself up for success in the end. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, so going on, I, again, just keep talking about things that make us a little bit different as you're looking at other pharmacy programs and trying to figure out the best path for you. Sakara, do you wanna talk a little bit about um, the co-op experience and how you get a co-op, how you decide where you wanna go on a co-op, um, what types of, uh, what are you doing, what are you actually doing when you're on co-op? What, what is that experience like day to day? Definitely. Um, so at Northeastern's co-op program, specifically within pharmacy, um, we have to complete a co-op in an institutional setting. So that's like your hospital setting, as well as a community setting. So that could be your hospital outpatient or um, your retail setting like a CVS or Walgreens. And then you also have a room for an elective co-op. So that could be within a pharmaceutical company, um, a managed care organization. Um, you can even do research as your third co-op. That's an option if you're interested in that route. And Northeastern has this whole system um, where you can kind of filter through all the different co-ops and it's not just restricted to Boston or Massachusetts. You do have the opportunity to go out of state, even out of the country for certain co-ops. So I would definitely recommend exploring that if you can. And basically while you're in that four month co-op experience, you're essentially treated um, as a pharmacy intern. Um, right before starting, you need to send in some information to be a licensed pharmacy intern. And I remember like my day to day, I was like working with the other pharmacy technicians and the pharmacist, um, kind of shadowing with the pharmacist to see what I'll be doing in a couple of years, as well as working alongside the pharmacy technicians for um, like filling or um, counseling patients on medications. So you do definitely feel part of the team when you're on co-op. Um, it's basically like it's your job for that four months. And like Dr. Amberg said, a lot of people tend to stay on their co-ops um, afterwards. I know I still work part-time at the co-op I worked at two years ago, so yeah. Emily, do you want to add, I know um, when I talk to a lot of students, they talk about some of the soft skills that aren't necessarily related to their profession when they go on co-op. So I'm a little curious if um, doing co-op helped you with your um, post-graduation um, employment, interviewing skills, feeling prepared to, to really start working as a pharmacist. Did you feel, um, especially as you're looking at other recent graduates who are, um, you know, entering the workforce with you, did you feel like I have a little bit of a leg up? How did, how did co-op prepare you? 
Yeah, it definitely gave me the experience I need for my job. It gives you almost the baseline of what you need to do day to day as a pharmacist. And it allows you to do more uh, clinical work uh, before, because when you come in as a pharmacist, you need to be trained in all areas. And if you know how to mix IVs, if you know how to work in a central pharmacy, especially in a hospital pharmacy, that's where I'm located. So that's why I'm thinking that way. It just is able to go out and work as what I want to do as a clinical pharmacist without having to stay down here and training in all those areas. Um, It definitely helped with my residency interviewing process because they looked at that as a part of your experience and they see that you have a job, you maintained a job, you know, all these basic skills. And that's really um, something that they look for in their applicants as well. And Melissa, if I can just interject for a second, I think one thing that we have failed to say, and I'm going to say it loud and clear here about our co-op and our IPIs, is these are paid. So when you're looking and what makes us different, um, I might have said it early on when I was talking about it, but I really want to emphasize this, that these are paid experiences. So again, we are the only school in the United States where you can do your introductory pharmacy practice experiences and get paid. And that is because we're founded under our co-op. So Northeastern's cooperative education has been its longstanding thing of why come to Northeastern because of the co-op program. So these are paid experiences. And we talk about that because again, when you complete that four month of you, as you've heard many of our students and alums said, you generally, if you're a good employee, they want to keep you. So it's an opportunity you to keep a part-time job, make some extra money, and build the network and the skills and continue to foster and develop that so that when you graduate, you're just not coming out with the the IPPE or introductory pharmacy, you know, 12 weeks of it or whatever, and then the 36 weeks of your advance, you actually have a whole year generally or up to a whole year or more of practice, real life employee practice in the pharmacy world. And that really does help to set our graduates apart. As Emily mentioned, I can tell you that we hear it a lot from our preceptors and from, you know, I know lots of faculty and and residency directors, and they say how prepared the students are graduated from Northeastern upon graduation to be able to step in and start working. Great, thank you. Um, Serena, you mentioned NUN, right? You did NUN. Have any of you done a dialogue either? No, I haven't done a dialogue. (laughs) Um, so NUN, you kind of you kind of slipped it in there, but um, I think another really wonderful um, aspect of our program is that there is room for global experiences, even in a um, program like pharmacy, where you have a pretty um, defined course load that you're taking. Um, so certainly, I didn't know if you want to talk a little bit briefly about what NUN is um, and what that experience was like for you. Sure. Yeah. So. Um, I didn't originally apply for NUN, but I got into the program and the more like I thought about it, the more I thought it'd be like a great opportunity to like step out of my comfort zone and to like just do something that I would never normally do. Um, So I did go to NUN Greece, which is in Thessaloniki. um, And I think it's like the largest um, like cohort for NUN. It's like 200 to 300 kids. Um, And Basically, you go for your first semester abroad um, with this huge group. Um, so you really do like get to, you don't feel like you're alone in, the, in this huge new place. Like you have so many other people who are like on the same boat as you. Um, and that sort of helps you like form like a bond with those people. Like I'm still very close with like all the people that um, I met abroad in Thessaloniki. Um, And yeah, like we lived in, um, for Greece at least, we lived in like two hotels um, and we basically occupied the whole hotels. Um, It was like near a boardwalk and a lot of the things that we did there, um, like we, there were so many different like excursions that they had planned for us and like family, we had our family groups and like um, different activities that you go on with your family group. So it was like, they really promoted like getting into the culture and like um, having all these experiences and exploring. Um, So I thought that was really cool. And then all while taking classes at um, American College of Thessaloniki, which was just like a short bus ride away. Um, That was gonna be my question. Did your classes 
Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, that was just like a really unique experience, I thought, and I was probably like one of the best decisions I've ever made, like in terms of my college career. <laughs> That's great. And when yeah. you came back to campus, you were all set to stay in the six year track. Um, well, I was actually not in pharmacy at that point. I was in pharmaceutical sciences. So yeah, I didn't mention that either. But um, yeah, I thought I wanted to more go into the research side of things. And then later on, I decided I wanted to go the pharmacy. Um, and that transition was pretty seamless because it's very similar, like the pre-professional um, years are very similar. So That's a great point to bring up. And that's not something we had talked about either. So I think another another thing to, to worth mentioning is that you could start another program and transition into pharmacy, or you could start in pharmacy and transition um, elsewhere. Like if you thought you, you are gravitating more towards the research side and pharmaceutical sciences is a better fit, for example. Um, so um, it, it probably lessens a little bit of the anxiety of committing to, to any major really when you apply to Northeastern. So you do select the um, major on the common app, like Dr. Van Amberg was saying, if you select pharmacy on the application, you apply and you admit and you're started, you're in the pharmacy program. There's not a separate application required for the pharmacy program. Um, it's just all part of the central admissions application process. Um, and so I just wanted to, to go back to the global. So I just wanted to mention, so we have the NUN program and then there's another program called um, Global Quest, which is spring semester first year. There's also Dialogue with Civilization, which are short-term um, programs during the summertime. And there's a lot of other different ways of studying abroad that aren't necessarily the traditional semester, which pharmacy students may or may not have time for based on the programs. A lot of our students in a variety of majors at Northeastern are really taking advantage of these unique um, global opportunities. Um, Melissa, just to add to that, we do have a couple of our introductory pharmacy practice quote unquote co-ops that are um, international. So there, there are, there is an opportunity. It would be after you, um, you have, you have to be in the pathway that allows for three co-ops because you must to an institution, you must do a community. So you have to have the pathway for a choice one, um, mm -hmm. but you can do a choice international co-op um, in pharmacy. Um, and the other thing is, is during your P4 year, should you choose and want to elect, you can do a six week international um, experience as well. Um, so again, there are opportunities outside of either having to do a dialogue or coming through the NUN or the, the quest but there are opportunities for which we can do that. And that is a big initiative of the university is to have a global experience. So we're always looking for ways to integrate or allow for more students to have that international exposure. That's wonderful. Um, Anna, that kind of leads into the next question I often get asked is how is the School of Pharmacy positioned within Bouvet, which is positioned in Northeastern, do you feel like it's just one big university. Um, do you have friends in other majors? Are you meeting other people? Are you taking classes outside of pharmacy? How does that all work as a pharmacy student at Northeastern? Yeah, so my first two years here, um, I wasn't really in the pharmacy school yet. So it was really just, I was taking classes that other pharmacy kids were taking, but other um, students in other majors in Bouvet were taking as well. So I met a lot of people um, in other health science majors through my classes. Um, it's not until your P1 year it starts becoming all pharmacy people. Um, I do have the majority of my friends are in other majors. Um, so through other organizations on campus, I've met so many other people. It doesn't feel like my whole life is just pharmacy school. Um, it's really easy to stay connected in other ways on campus and inter interact with a lot of other people. Um, yeah, that hasn't been a challenge at all, but it is also nice. Um, in my P1 year now, things are moving a lot more towards pharmacy, um, getting to network with a lot of my peers more. But the first few years at college, um, especially if you join other clubs, organizations, it's it's really nice to meet other people, other majors, see what else is out there. It's been a good balance. That's great. So we only have a few more minutes left. So I just want to make sure that we get to everyone's questions. And I am going to put my um, email address in in case anyone has any follow up questions that they have. 
Um, so Emily, I didn't know if there's anything that any of the students had said that really resonated with you um, as you reflect back at your time at Northeastern about um, anything that really stands out or um, anything you wanted to comment on at the end. Uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I kind of brushed over my like core experience at Northeastern. I was really involved when I was a student. Um, I was involved with the pharmacy ambassador program, which was really nice because I didn't start as a freshman. So I didn't get that experience of having like found a lot of people early on. So it was a good way of me staying really involved in campus and helping with the pharmacy school. So I helped with interviewing process and I was able to teach a class through that program. Um, I also took a class with Dr. JVA as well, um, where we eventually were able to teach one of the freshman classes, which was really good experience because it helped grow my leadership skills and my teaching skills, which I use to this day. Um, I precept students now, um, and I reflect a lot on that and use a lot of that knowledge to help me in my career. Um, I also was in uh, PLS, which was really helped me to put myself out there, and PLS is a leadership uh, um, fraternity that you have to apply for. And it really pushed me to get out my comfort zone and be a little bit more, um, take on those leadership roles that I sometimes struggle with. Um, so yeah, uh, being involved with the pharmacy school was definitely a huge part of my um, journey in pharmacy school. And it really helped me lead to where I am today. That's great, thank you so much. And we had a great question come in that I'm gonna use as the final question to the students and then I'll um, bring it back to you, Dr. Van Amber, to close out. The question was, what has been your favorite experience throughout um, your time in the school of pharmacy so far? So Ayla, I'll start with you on that one. Um, big question. <laughs> I would have to say uh, the co-op that I did over the summer um, was probably my favorite and also most memorable experience. Um, like I mentioned before, I completed it at Massachusetts General Hospital. Um, I was in a pretty niche division. I did oncology clinical trials. And there you got to see pharmacists do more than just like fill, double check, dispense medications. Um, they have a couple of other roles as well, like administration and like writing up some protocols and everything. And just being able to see that side of pharmacy that you don't encounter very often um, was really cool. That's really neat. I know I when I talk to students who have done co-op a lot of times, they're really surprised by what they're seeing in their positions. They're being exposed to more than they, they thought they would. Um, so it can be really, really useful in that way. Um, Sakura, do you wanna share what your favorite experience has been so far? Yeah, um, so I have a pretty similar story to Isla as well. Um, my first co-op was also at like a clinical trials pharmacy. And I remember going into pharmacy school, I had a pretty narrow vision of what the field of pharmacy was. And I didn't really understand like all of the opportunities pharmacists had once they graduated. So it was a really great way to discover this unique career path. And it's definitely something I'm considering pursuing post-graduation. So I really do value that opportunity. And I was able to get it really early on in the program as well. That's great, thank you. Serena, do you have a, anything you'd like to share? And bonus points if it's not co-op. <laughs> given. <laughs> That's a given. Um, it might have to be co-op. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did, I worked at Walgreens. I thought that was, um, it was my first pharmacy experience that I've like ever been in. Um, so I thought it was like, I learned so much during the whole experience about like retail pharmacy. Um, before that experience, I thought that maybe I would want to do retail pharmacy. Um, but then I sort of learned about it and like, I know now that it's like not the path for me, although it was like a really great experience and I learned so much. Um, I know that like, I definitely wanna gear towards the more clinical side of things. So that makes me really excited for my next co-op in the spring. No, that's great. I think co-op can be really helpful in learning what you like and what you don't like and what you really gravitate towards because how else would you know unless you have the opportunity to try it. Um, Anna, do you wanna go next? So I did really enjoy my first co-op last summer. It was a great experience, but um, I'll touch on something else I've enjoyed during my time in the PharmD program, which is kind of connecting with the other students and making friends with um, other people in the PharmD program and getting to see what their co-op experiences were like, how they differed from mine, um, kind of their interests and where they want to direct their careers. Um, because I really did come into this program not knowing much about pharmacy. So having a network of friends and students 
um, as well as getting to know my professors a bit really helps guide where I want to go um, with my future career and my future co-ops. That's great. I think that's, that's a good point also is sometimes students wonder if they need to have worked at a pharmacy in high school or had personal experience or co uh, shadowed somewhere. You really don't. Um, we're, we're definitely going to teach you everything you need um, within Northeastern itself. Um, so in the last few minutes, Dr. Van Amberg, if you want to um, wrap up, um, share any um, advice you have to the, the people watching this uh, webinar as they're um, looking at the schools for next year. Yeah, thank you. So first of all, I want to thank our students for being here and for Emily as our alum representing. Um, I do want you to seriously look at Northeastern. I think we have so much to offer and I think our students shared that with you that it's not just a traditional experience. The, there is the whole university aspects that you can get involved in. There is great um, networking and learning experiences that can take you beyond just getting your pharmacy degree. Um, and think big and broad. Um, there's so many things that you can do with your doctor of pharmacy degree. It is not just what you might think traditionally or what you've been exposed to um, out there, but you know there, there are veterinary pharmacists out there. There are you know industry, there are financial planning pharmacists out there. So there's just a whole wealth of things that you can do with your PharmD degree. And you don't need to know it now. What you need to know is, is this a potential pathway for me? And can I align my strengths of what I do well within this career path, right? So what are my strengths? If you have a passion for math and science and learning, then you will excel in our program. Um, and so again, I have been at Northeastern for 20 plus years and I love our program. I love the students that have come through our program. And the thing that I love about it is my connection to the graduates of our program and watching them succeed and, and go on and be quite successful. So um, we are very, my commitment is the same commitment that you'll see from other faculty. Um, and again, we're very committed to our students' success um, within our program and upon graduating from our program and going out there and really representing what your education that you got from Northeastern can do for the profession, because ultimately we came in here to take care of patients and to provide a better place for our and that's what I want to say. We we really set our. Thanks. We lost you a little bit at the end there, but. Um, oh, was, sorry. <laughs> it was a great session. Thank you all so much for your time. I really appreciate um, everyone for being here today. And please don't hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you all so much.